Hey guys, it's Scott Clark with Scooter Media, and in today's video, I'm reviewing the 2023 16-inch MacBook Pro M2 Max laptop. Let's get into it. Before we jump into the review, I will say that my main reason for buying this laptop is to edit videos as I run my own video production company as well as doing these YouTube videos. So this review will be based around my use as a video editor, however I do use it as my daily driver as well and I've been using it for about 6 months now. This is also the very first Apple product that I have purchased. The M2 Max MacBook Pro is Apple's most powerful laptop to date and features the new M2 Max chip to provide unparalleled power and speed. The version that I'll be reviewing today is the 16-inch model in space gray, has been upgraded to 64 gigabytes of RAM, and has a one terabyte SSD drive. Taking a look at the laptop itself, it is the space gray color, which I think looks great, and the aluminum chassis feels really sturdy and well-built. I also really like the simple minimalist look of the MacBook, with the Apple logo in the middle that everyone has become accustomed to, and the MacBook Pro letters printed on the bottom. It measures 14.01 by 9.77 by 0.66 inches and weighs 4.8 pounds, which isn't light, but I also don't find it to be overly heavy either, if that makes sense. Opening the laptop, we immediately see the giant trackpad, and I will say that this is the best trackpad that I have ever used. It is very large at 6.3 inches by 3.9 inches, and uses haptic feedback which allows you to click basically anywhere on the touchpad and everything just works as it should on it. The backlit keyboard is really nice as well and features full-size function keys and the keys on the keyboard do have a nice amount of travel when typing. The Touch ID fingerprint reader located on the power button provides a fast and convenient way to log back into the laptop as well as sign into apps and sites. Unless I'm traveling, I am someone who prefers to use a full-size keyboard and mouse when editing videos, so I don't use the laptop's keyboard and trackpad very often, but I have zero complaints with the keyboard when I do use it, and as I mentioned earlier, the trackpad is the best that I've ever used. One thing I can also say about this laptop is that the speakers are best in class and sound terrific. The MacBook Pro features a six-speaker sound system that sounds loud, very detailed, and well-balanced, and the amount of bass coming out of them is very surprising. I usually edit videos with headphones on and have definitely found myself doing a lot more editing without the headphones on because the sound is so good coming straight out of the speakers. I also like to listen to music when I'm not doing video editing and any style of music that I've listened to on this thing sounds great as well. When looking at the ports on the 16 inch MacBook Pro M2 Max, on the right hand side there is an SDXC memory card slot which for someone like me who shoots a ton of video on SD cards is great as I can pull the card right from the camera and directly import the footage without having to worry about any kind of external card reader. There's also a Thunderbolt 4 port as well as the full size HDMI 2.1 port which allows 4K support at 240Hz or 8K at 60Hz. The left side features a 3.5mm headphone jack, a pair of Thunderbolt 4 ports, and the MagSafe 3 charging port with a color matched cable to charge the laptop battery. The battery is a 100 watt hour battery and is super long lasting. Apple claims it can run up to 22 hours when watching video playback and 15 hours running wireless web browsing and while I haven't tested these claims, in my everyday use I can easily use a laptop all day for an 8 hour workday and never run out of battery. I can also say that the performance of the laptop doesn't downgrade at all when running on battery power versus the power adapter. And it does include the 140 watt USB-C power adapter and MagSafe 3 cable that will charge up to 50% in just 30 minutes. One of the other things I love about this laptop is the gorgeous 16.2 inch 16 by 10 aspect ratio liquid retina XDR display. This is essentially a mini LED panel with 10,000 mini LEDs that supports HDR content and has adapter refresh rates up to 120Hz using Apple's ProMotion technology. This display is nice and bright at 1000 nits of sustained brightness and 1600 nits peak brightness and has very true to life colors, incredible detail in the shadows and has a 1 million to 1 contrast ratio. The display and its color accuracy are very important to me and I have no complaints when using this display as it checks all the boxes for me. 
Located at the top in the middle of the display is the notch housing the 1080p webcam camera, which up until a couple years ago isn't something I really used, but in this day and age with more meetings and calls taking place online, it really is an important piece of the laptop and this one delivers nicely. The camera has a wider aperture to let more light in, as well as a large image sensor for better performance in low light. It is nice and detailed and the image looks really good for a tiny little camera. The MacBook Pro also includes a studio quality three mic array that rivals professional grade microphones and it'll minimize background noise so your voice comes through loud and clear during important meetings and calls. Now that we've covered the physical aspects of the M2 Max MacBook Pro, let's talk about what's under the hood and overall performance and honestly, I'm not sure there's anything that you can throw at this machine that it can't handle. The Apple Silicon M2 Max chip combined with the 12 core CPU, 38 core GPU, and 400 gigabyte per second memory bandwidth in this laptop provides unparalleled efficiency and speed. I mainly edit 4K 10-bit video from Canon cameras, which can sometimes be hard on a computer, and I have had zero issues when editing on this laptop. Render and export times have gone down drastically for me, and I don't have to walk away from the computer for a snack while it exports a video. And speaking of exporting, this is usually quite hard on the machine as well, and this is normally when the fans kick in and it sounds like an airplane taking off. Well, not on the Mac. The fans do start occasionally during a long export, but I can't believe that while using this for the last six months, I can barely remember hearing any fan noise at all. It really is quite astonishing. As mentioned earlier, I upgraded to 64 gigabytes of unified memory, and while the M2 Max is capable of 96 gigabytes, I've not noticed any need to upgrade to the maximum amount of memory. I've put this thing through the ringer using multiple Adobe apps at the same time while also running Safari, etc., and I've not noticed any slowdown whatsoever. I also decided on the one terabyte SSD of internal storage, and while you can upgrade all the way up to eight terabytes, it was just too expensive to upgrade for me personally. I have a few of the Samsung external SSDs that I use to edit off of, and I find that those work perfectly for my needs. There's no noticeable slowdown using the external drives, and they're just much cheaper than what Apple was charging to upgrade. I'll also quickly mention for any other video editors out there that I am using Premiere Pro to edit on this laptop, and while I've heard of others having errors, shutdowns, and other major issues, I've had a very smooth experience between the Mac and the Adobe products so far. There are also a few more things that the M2 Max can do that I haven't had a chance to test out, and those include support for up to four external displays, the ability to edit up to 10 streams of 8K ProRes or 43 streams of 4K ProRes video, and it also supports Wi-Fi 6E. So far, I've really had nothing negative to say about the laptop, but if there is one negative, it has to be the price. That being said, this is the flagship model, and I believe you do get what you pay for, but the 16-inch M2 Max MacBook Pro starts at $4,499 Canadian, and with the upgrade to 64 gigabytes of memory, it jumps up to $4,999. And I also purchased the three years of Apple Care Plus for it, and if anybody has already watched my previous laptop video, you'll know why. But in the end, this computer cost me just over $6,000, and if it lasts three to five years for me, I'll be happy with that. I'll also probably be asked about the jump from PC to Mac, and to be honest, there was not much to it. The hardest part for me to wrap my head around was the command key on the Mac instead of the control key on the PC. And when you've used the same shortcuts on a PC for years and years, your brain becomes accustomed to where the keys are, and it just takes a little while to get used to the change. But other than that, it was really a seamless transition. In summary, I think the 16-inch M2 Max MacBook Pro is amazing. There's really nothing it hasn't been able to handle, and the speed and efficiency that it works at is mind-blowing. If you are a creative professional, this laptop will provide all of the power and specifications that you will need to get the job done right. If you guys found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing as it really does make a difference, and I'd love to have you join me on this YouTube journey. If you haven't had a chance to watch yet, here's a link to the video of my experience with my last laptop, which is why I made the jump to Apple and the MacBook Pro. Thanks for watching today's video. I appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one.